Here on the Voice Essentials channel, you'll often hear me talk about the difference between energy and effort and how the distinction can be the difference between a voice that is free and agile and a voice that is tight and constricted. Today we're going to learn to detect between the two so that your voice remains free from tension while you sing. Sound check. G'day, welcome back to Voice Essentials where everybody sings. My name is Dr. Dan and I'm a contemporary singing voice specialist. We singing teachers do fall foul of using language and terminology that can sometimes leave the uninitiated feeling confused and excluded. So today I want to try to resolve at least one area of confusion around my use of the two terms, effort and energy. Now uh, you could be forgiven for thinking that this is a play on semantics with both words being closely aligned and in one sense they are similar. But when I use the terms in my teaching studio, I load the term effort with a negative connotation and in contrast I use the word energy to represent a positive outcome for the voice. As we move forward, you may have heard these two words used differently by other singing teachers, even in an opposite manner to how we'll be applying them in this video. And that's okay, unfortunately in the world of teaching singing, we still don't have a codified and universally agreed upon glossary of terms, so as long as you learn how your teacher uses specific terms in their teaching, it's all good. We'll be doing an exercise together in a moment so that you can experience the difference between effort and energy in your own voice. But before we do, I, I want us to understand what is happening in your instrument when the voice moves between energy and effort. We're able to observe these two opposing points of balance more readily when the voice changes its dynamic output. While outlining laryngeal function during phonation, Ronald C. Shearer writes, the loudness of sounds is related to their acoustic intensity and loudness during speech is primarily dependent on subglottal pressure. An increase in subglottal pressure changes the characteristics of the airflow that exits the glottis, the glottal flow, during vocal fold vibration, creating an increase in acoustic intensity. As it often is in life, we are in search of the Goldilocks point, an optimal point of balance that is not too hot, and not too cold. You see, while it's possible to apply too much subglottal pressure, it's equally possible to use too little. Phonation requires a certain minimal amount of subglottal air pressure to set the vocal folds into vibration and then to maintain phonation, the phonation threshold pressure, PTP. Shearer further explains that another related concept to PTP is the phonation threshold flow, PTF, the minimum value of the mean airflow that is associated with the initiation of the vocal fold vibration. At the moment PTP is obtained, there also is a mean flow present. PTF is also affected by numerous variables. It should reduce in value when the tissue viscosity is reduced, fundamental frequency is lowered, vertical glottal depth is increased, or glottal adduction is increased. So here's the thing. You need to achieve a certain level of subglottal pressure, PTP, to start and maintain sound, but to truly achieve vocal balance and efficient singing, we need to learn to measure and adjust our PTF, our phonation threshold flow. In layman's terms, if you apply too much push to your sound, especially at the start of a phrase, the vocal effort you will need to sustain that phrase will be high and therefore cost you more vocally. But if you can learn to initiate your sound with vocal onset that is balanced with good energy, the outcome is likely to be more sustainable over time. John S. Rubin, when writing about subglottic pressure, notes that phonation requires close coordination between two mechanical processes. Number one, movement of the chest wall and diaphragm. This determines airflow and subglottic pressure. And number two, movement of the vocal folds and the mucosal walls of the pharynx and mouth. This determines pitch, loudness and quality of sound. The challenge here is our bodies don't always cooperate nicely. When learning to sing louder, most students, particularly beginner students, will find themselves pushing harder, especially when the notes get higher. So 
As the subglottal pressure increases, so does the breath flow. And the result is a voice that gets tighter and tighter and tighter, which generally has the singer applying more and more effort for less and less result. As Rubin notes, sustaining a tone at constant air pressure and intensity and varying the pitch for the duration of the musical phrase is clearly fundamental to singing. So if the answer is less effort and consistent energy, what does that look and sound like? Well, it's at this point that I want to get practical with you. It's really easy for you to do this at home because we're going to be singing this activity starting on a single note. Now importantly, I don't want you to approach this activity as an exercise that you would do over and over again. It's just a kind of a one-off activity for you to experience and see what you feel and hear in your own voice. Now to start, I want you to choose a comfortable note in the middle of your vocal range. Now, for me, that's going to be an F3. Ah. Now firstly, let's play with the phonation threshold flow, the PTF, to experience how our breath flow interacts with how our vocal folds create sound. So here is it with a reduction in the flow. Ah. Ah. Notice how any overt reduction in flow causes the voice to go to air, it just goes breathy. Now let's play with the PTP, the phonatory threshold pressure, and sing the same note but increase the volume, or in this case, the, the air push. Uh, uh. Now when I do this, I feel constriction in my throat as the pressure increases, and you would have heard how the sound level ultimately compresses to give me less volume in the long run. Now, we're going to do this the same two activities, but we're going to just slightly change it by going from an R vowel and then doing it, now doing it on an NG. Let's see if that makes any difference. Mm. That's interesting. Mm. My vocal folds, as I reduce the PTF, my vocal folds are able to maintain the oscillation, the, the sound, a little bit longer. Let's do the increase in PTP, the increase in pressure, and see if we can form more volume. Now when you do it, what do you notice? In my voice, I, I notice that the NG maintained phonatory output for longer when I reduced flow. And I was able to increase my volume a little bit, at least maintain it before the voice reached a point of constriction when I did it on the NG. So what's going on here? Well, here we are noticing that due to the semi-occluded posture of the NG sound, the PTP, the phonatory threshold pressure, has a wider range of application from soft to loud. It requires far less PTF than the open vowel, especially when I sang louder or tried to sing louder. To, the, to tie this all back into the title of the video, singing with effort means overdriving the voice with too much pressure, whereas singing with energy means the voice has achieved a phonatory balance which empowers healthy and sustainable acoustic values. Activities like this help us to experience variations in the voice and also train the voice to coordinate differently. You'll have noticed that underpinning all of what we've looked at today when comparing effort and energy is your breathing. Click on this video and I'll continue to teach you in detail about how to develop better breath management for singing. I'll see you soon. I'm Dr. Dan. Sing well.